Multi-threading is a process where you can have multiple things going on at the same time. When you set up multi-threading, you're implementing what Java calls concurrency, concurrent operations that can execute simultaneously. When you run code within a single class, say within a main class, the process is linear. Only one thing can be executed at a time. But in order to create multiple threads, you can either create your new classes that extend a class called thread, or you can implement an interface. I'll show you in this video how to create your own thread classes. I'm starting in a project called Extending Thread, where the main class has an empty main method. I won't do anything in the main method quite yet. I'm going to start by creating a custom class that extends the thread class. I'll go to my package, right-click, and choose New Class. I'll name the custom class MyThread, and I'll set its superclass as the Thread class. Notice that the Thread class is a member of the java.lang package, and so you won't need a special import statement for it. I won't add a main method because this Thread class won't be executed on its own. Instead, it will always be called from a main application and I'll click Finish. My custom class is extending thread as its superclass, and the one method that I have to implement in my custom class is a method called run. The run method returns void, and it will be called automatically whenever I want to start my new thread. I'll place the cursor inside the class definition, and I'll press Control Space to see a list of all of the methods of the superclass, and I'll choose run. Eclipse adds the override directive, a to-do comment, and a call to the superclasses run method. I don't need either the to-do comment or the superclass call, so I'll delete both of those, and now I'm ready to implement my thread. Within the thread, I'm going to loop a few times. I'll set an integer variable to indicate how many times I'm going to do a loop. I'll name the variable iterations, and I'll set it to a value of 5. Next, I'll create a for loop. I'll type 4 and press Control space and I'll choose Iterate over Array, even though I don't have an array I'm working with. Then, instead of looping over the array, that is, until I reach the length of the array, I'll replace that with the Iterations integer variable. So now I'm iterating five times, starting at zero and continuing to loop as long as i is less than five. Within the for loop, I'll output something to the console. I'll output the string from secondary thread. And then after I do the output, I'll pause execution of the thread for two seconds. To do this, I'll call a method called sleep. This is a static method of the thread class. Because I'm executing the code within a class that extends thread, I don't need any prefix. I can just call the method directly. When you call sleep, set the pause in milliseconds. So if I say sleep for 2000, that means I want to sleep for two seconds. Notice that that causes a compiler error. I move the cursor over the error indicator, and I see that I have an unhandled exception called interrupted exception. An interrupted exception is thrown whenever the thread is interrupted. And you can interrupt the thread from outside the thread, that is, from a process that instantiates and starts the thread. Whenever you call the sleep method, you have to handle the interrupted exception. Now, I could surround just that call with the try catch, but I'd rather surround the entire for loop so that if an exception happens, I'll jump out of the for loop automatically. So I'll select the entire for loop, then I'll right click and I'll choose surround with try catch block. Eclipse automatically detects the interrupted exception that might be thrown, and so it sets up a catch block with that exception class. I don't need this to-do comment, so I'll get rid of it. And I'll replace the call to print the stack trace with the call to system.error.println. And I'll pass in the exception object. So that's my custom thread. Again, the most important thing here is that I'm implementing the run method. That's the method that's going to be called when I instantiate and start my thread. Now I'll go back to my main class. Within the main class, I'm going to do another loop. So I'll create another integer variable, which I'll also call iterations, and I'll set its value to 3. Now I'll create an instance of my custom thread class. I'll set the data type, my thread, and I'll call it thread, and I'll instantiate it with the automatic constructor. 
Next, I'll start the thread. Because my custom class extends the superclass thread, that means I have access to all of its methods. And the most important method here is start. When you call start from the primary process, that results in calling the run method in the custom class. Now I'll create my own loop and do a little bit of output from the main process so I can see that both processes are running at the same time. I'll create a for loop. Once again, I'll choose iterating over an array, and I'll replace this length attribute with iterations. And within the for loop, I'll do a little bit of system output, and I'll output from main process. Then, just like I did in the thread itself, I'll add a call to the sleep method. This time, I have to call the sleep method explicitly as a static method of the thread class. I didn't have to do that in the custom thread class because I was already in a class that extended thread. But here, I'll call thread.sleep, and this time I'll sleep for three seconds, setting a value of 3000. Then, just as I did before, I'll wrap the for loop inside a try catch block, right clicking and choosing surround with, try catch, and then I'll delete the to do and I'll once again replace the print stack trace with error output. Now I'm ready to test my application. I'll run the application, and I immediately see the main process output, and then the secondary thread, and then the main, then the secondary, the secondary again, the main again, and the secondary thread. Once both threads complete their executions, the application is done and it automatically terminates. So that's the simplest approach to multi-threading in Java. Create your own custom class that extends thread, add your own functionality to the custom run method, and then instantiate the class and start it from your main process.